Hi guys, <coughs> Nikki here from Mandela Holtz Designs. Today we're going to use the um, Etchall Dip liquid. I thought it would be good for you to see how this fantastic little thing works. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see anything. I'm using, this is an old vase that um, it's lost its colour, it's lost everything. So what I'm actually going to do is be using the vase as my pot to hold the etchel because this one isn't quite big enough. So basically we're going to use this sweet little vase and the etchel dip which that's the small size this is the big one this is the biggest they do which is 32 ounce and what's nice like it all says you can reuse it so the first thing we need to do is put other than find yourself a container to hold what it is you want to do if you wanted to etch this vase for example all you'd need to do is actually fill it up on the inside if you can't find a container big enough to take it for it to go in and dip that way you can just etch the inside um, I've not actually managed that yet so we shall see what it looks like as we're using it for this one you need I have got three liters of water because I'm not sure how much I'll need yet but mm, 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 Right. basically we're going to fill this down the sides of where the vase is uh, the little vase is oh, need to go on the inside. you fill it to where you want it to etch as you can see that keeps popping up but we can put um, stones and what have you so you need when you take this out first thing you need to do is okay where's it gone ah there it is <laughs> yes yeah, so I have one of the sharpies I'm using right as you can see the water is to here so all we're going to do is mark a line exactly where the water has gone now I'm going to empty the water out We need to dry both the little vase and the big one and get all the water off it. I actually find that the kitchen roll is the best. We have a little bit of water in that one. Inside isn't too much of a problem because you're not. Um, etching inside it you're etching the outside so it needs to be bone dry and smudge free and then you wipe the inside of your other container you can use um, big like coke size bottles the big three litre um, bottles to etch your pieces in with the dip but I don't drink much fizzy stuff and I'm not allowed any so we generally don't have any that sort of size so as you can see there's our line now that means that's how much etchel dip we need to put in first thing is we need to find something to hold this little vase down so we need something that's heavy not necessarily heavy but we just need to fill up just to give it a bit of stability sorry about that <laughs> A 
I would recommend using dried peas or anything sort of that you would use for baking rather than the um, stone uh, the beads that I'm using. Right, so now we can put that back. No, we don't put that back in yet. Get it right. Right. Oh God. There we go. When you buy this, this is how it comes, and I don't know if you can see, that's the colour of when you get it. So we take this mark, and we pull the etchel up to that mark, there we go, and because it all gets pulled back into the pot afterwards, it's nice that you're not wasting so much. So now you take your vase or what piece you wanted to, no, I might need more in there. Okay, all right. Now you leave this for the 15 minutes. So I shall be back in a minute. I'm just gonna put some more beads in there. I recommend filling it up as much as you can. Right, I'm back. I've, um, used a couple of bits to hold the jar in because the I couldn't find anything heavy enough and then the rice wasn't heavy either so I've used as I said a few bits to keep it in place so now we can take it out I'm just going to pop it over there for a minute and what we're going to do is pull this all back all back into its bottle well, when you use these bottles for your etching, uh, you can actually use the top to put your liquid back in. Pour it straight back through. And it started to etch the inside of that vase, which is quite nice. So, there we go. That's that little bit done. Now, we need to give this a rinse and empty the contents. So, the first thing I need to do is empty the rice out. It's a bit damp inside mine, which isn't a problem because this rice is only for um, using it in crafting rather than to eat. Let's move that all out of the way. As you can see it started to etch quite nicely. It's left quite a nice Itch. I'll just go and rinse it off. I should be back in a moment. I'm back. I've rinsed it and got all the rice out. I use a piece of kitchen roll to try and get most of the moisture on the inside out. It's, as you can see, it's etched beautifully. I think the etchings actually got inside the jar, uh, inside the vase, <laughs> going by this piece. But that's not too horrendous because I'm actually going to be covering that top piece. <coughs> so now you've put your bits back. You can now decorate as you wish. Um, and I'm using some of my bits from Angela Holt's Shabby Chic Kit November which you can get sign up for now um, her blog will be at the bottom of the video along with the etchel link to their shop which is etchel.com this is the lace that came in the uh, 
shabby chic kit and I'm just literally cutting the whole piece in half need to get me some new scissors but what I want to do is basically so it gathers round here um, yeah, I'm gonna have to do the sewing I've got quite lost where my needle's gone ah. oh. that's the thread not the needle Looks like we've lost the needle. Right, have to go and right. I'm back with a needle and thread. <laughs> We're just going to make a the sort of shape you would make if you were doing a um, lace flower. Put your double little knot here. Oops. She says. Mm. Yeah, it's been a bit mad here at the minute. Um, my brother has come to stay with us. So he's down from Stockport. We don't see him very often. And he's actually just gone to see his daughter in uh, Luton. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, right. Make sure you do a good enough knot to sit at the end here. <laughs> Not like mine. popping through. I'll stick another one in just to make sure it holds this time. Right, there we go. So you just sort of sew in and out of your holes. And I can't actually wait. Next Thursday I'll be going to Brighton, uh, Birmingham and staying with a friend and then we're going to the NEC to do some craft shopping which in my case is a lot of stuff um, there's so many little bits and pieces I run out of My lace collection is slowly filling up. And the laces that you get in the kits, as well as those you can buy on your on their own from Angela's shop, are beautiful. Mm, she's got the little kitty one that everybody's gone a bit nuts for. It is, it's so sweet. And it's the one I used on a little bag that I made for somebody. have to gather it as you go. I 
I'm using them a big piece because I don't know how much lace I need for what I want to do. I'm basically going to make a lace collar for the little vase which I can't believe it got inside an HD <laughs> rice maybe don't fill it up quite so much with rice next time but as I said I'm covering that piece so that's not too horrendous and I'm not the best and quickest hand sewer there is um, which is one of the reasons my husband bought me a, a sewing machine which I'm hoping to get out and use once I move back indoors which I hope will not be so too long but he does know I need to be in there by the 20th of November which is when I do my first live you stream uh, for Angela which is also going to be at the bottom so you can join her every Monday and from the 7th of November every other week um, myself, Debbie, Itza, I'm not sure about Steph and Rhonda at the moment um, but we're all doing live tutorials as you know, Angela is on a Monday. On a Tuesday, we have Scrapping Madge. Oh wow, she does some fantastic things. I mean fantastic. Um, and then we have Debbie on Wednesday, and I'm on the Thursday. But my first one won't be till the um, 20th of November but Debbie's is her first one is the um, 7th of November right just want to make a nice little collar I do recommend hot gluing this down once you've done. So now we'll put a little finishing knot on the end here. Because you don't want it gathered too much like you do a normal lace flower. another one in. There we go. Now cut that one off. And now we can work out which is the front and the back of the lace. I'm going to glue, put a big dollop of glue here first, just to hold the um, first piece of lace in place. gather and then once you've done your gathering you can pop just a little bit of glue just to keep it all in place so it doesn't pop out and 
doesn't need to be loads. Just enough to hold it. tiny piece of glue just here so we can hold these pieces together Mm, there we go nice and pretty mm, this is also out of Angela's lovely shabby chic kit. Cute little applique rose. There we go. Now I would like that up here somewhere. I think. Let's make sure we have the back there. far. Was I got some goodies this morning, um, the laces and the ribbons that I'd ordered and I ordered some of this beautiful green um, organza. I'm thinking that would look quite nice around the top there. Or we could actually do the same as we just did and do the sewing and then put that round. I think that would look quite nice. Or do we leave it flush? Let's have a look. like it flush. I'm actually going to start it from here because then I can hide the seam, the beginning of the um, ribbon. I do recommend trying to singe the ends just to seal it. glue here to sort of keep that flower flat up against it. Mm. Yes, I actually quite like that. I don't need any more glue on it either. What I might do is make some tails for the front. All that does is stops the fabric fraying. Mm, not too big. Edge 
watches on that one. And then we can just put these underneath here. cute just as it is. Yep, I'm going to leave that as that is. I think that's really quite sweet. It doesn't need anything else. You can add a candle if you wanted to, um, but I don't have one that fits. Um, I did start cutting one down, but it's going to take too much cutting down to pop in there. <coughs> so I do recommend trying to find a candle that fits your hole of your vase so there we are that's etchel and the shabby chic november kit mixed together so i hope you like it i think that's really quite cute and thank you for watching should see you next time bye bye